Hey, what's up everyone, Ollie here. So I wanted to do an updated Creative Studio setup tour sort of thing. So I did do a desk setup tour not too long ago, but I wanted to cover the whole space, how I have everything set up, the way I have everything set up and why I have everything set up and how I use this space. Before we get into this video, please subscribe to my newsletter if you haven't already. I send it out once a month sharing cool, interesting stories and sharing links to interesting things. So make sure to check it out. So my creative studio is actually located in a warehouse. I rent the warehouse and then I've built a purpose built sort of studio in the back of it. And it's really nice because it's just this one sort of long room where I sort of split it into two different areas and I shoot photos, videos, and anything sort of business related, work related, it all happens in here. The room itself has carpet tiles on the floor to help with sound deadening. And we also have a suspended ceiling. And in the suspended ceiling, I've actually put these 600 millimeters by 600 millimeter sort of uh, sound absorbing panels. They were super cheap. I think they were like 200, 300 pounds, something like that for the whole ceiling that I have in here. And it helps with the sound so, so much. As soon as you come in here, the echo is gone. It just absolutely dead in here. It's amazing. I don't actually use any other sort of soundproofing or anything like this. I just have the microphone just right here close to me. And yeah, the sound in here, it sounds incredible all because of those panels. I'm glad that I haven't had to put up sort of curtains or anything like that. It's just made it super easy to be able to get good audio anywhere in the studio. So the work area consists of desk setups, of course. So I have my main desk setup. I have the largest desk here naturally uh, because I like having the space. I like having all the room for some activities, basically. Yeah, I have a Pro Display XDR connected up to a MacBook Pro 14 inch, a Herman Miller Aeron chair, and my desk itself is a standing desk. Like I said, I've done an in-depth video on this desk setup. If you guys are interested, make sure to check that out. Next to that, I have a sideboard with a few things on it. I have some assistant speakers. I have a TV. And this TV actually works sort of in two different ways. So we have it whenever we want to watch something like a YouTube video or something like that. But we also have the security camera set up on there as well so that we can see the cameras outside. We can see what's going on around the warehouse. I have a Dyson fan on the walls. I also have some prints. These prints are actually pictures that I've shot myself. Just pictures that I shot over the years that I really like. I've printed them, put them on the wall. I do also need to put the TV on the wall. This is a Samsung frame TV. And I keep telling myself I'm going to put it on the wall. I've just been too lazy to do it yet. Okay, so this side is the workspace desk setup area of the studio. And yeah, I have my desk setup over here. Her Herman, Herman Miller hair on. Uh, I have my desk, of course, Pro Display XDR, MacBook Pro. I have a uh, IKEA trolley here as well. And yeah, just a few accessories. I'll of course leave links to everything that I can in the description below so that you guys can get access to everything. I have the Apple TV over here set up on this Samsung Frame TV, which I do need to put on the wall. I keep saying I will, but I haven't yet. We also have a Dyson fan over here. Yeah, this does hot and cold. So in the summer, it will keep us cool. In the winter, like we've just been going through, it will keep us warm. It's really good, actually. It keeps the whole studio in here warm just from this one fan. Next to that, we have two other desks. And one of those desks is for my full-time videographer and video assistant editor sort of person. I did used to have a sofa there, but since hiring him, obviously I've needed him in the studio. So we've chucked the sofa out and we've put his desk in there instead. And then this is my videographer's uh, setup video editor, videographer sort of setup. Yeah, he has, currently he has an ASUS ProArt display, something we're testing out right now. We might change it in the future. Quite nice. He has a 16 inch MacBook Pro. Yeah, he has his Logi keyboard and mouse, phone charger and stuff. Above, we have a Muto shelving unit with a YouTube plaque and some artwork and stuff. This light isn't actually always here, naturally. It doesn't make any sense to be there. The reason I have it there is just to light this side of the studio so that you guys can see it on camera. Otherwise, it's quite moody with the corner lighting we have in each of these corners. Go V sort of strip light over there. That is this side of the studio right now, the creative space. So when it comes to the studio area itself, you may have noticed there is not much natural light in here and that is on purpose. I want to be able to control the light in here as much as possible. I want it to be basically pitch black whenever I put the blinds down, whenever I sort of get rid of anything. I just want it to be pitch black so that when I have the key light on, when I have the accent lights on, all that sort of stuff, I have it completely controlled and the outside light isn't affecting my shots so that everything looks consistent. So if we start on the right side, we have Charlie's desk here as well. And this is the B-roll trolley. This holds all the B-roll stuff, another monitor. We also have a mirror here. You can see me in the mirror, there I am. So yeah, this mirror here, it's just so that I can see myself before I record a video, make sure 
that my hair looks right, face looks right, <laughs> of course. That's why we have that mirror there. This studio area is primarily where I record my videos and of course shoot photos. And it's really nice having this set up because I don't have to sort of mess things around. I don't have to move things around that often. It is a flexible area, but knowing that I can just get up off my desk come and sit here and start recording a video straight away it just makes my life so much easier and just helps me make sure that when I'm in that creative mindset, when I'm ready to make a video, I can just sit behind here, press the record button on the camera and just get ready to go. This is where I sit on this little sort of like wooden stool on this desk and I shoot all of the A-roll here. This desk itself here is from Ikea. The tabletop and the legs are from Ikea. And what I've tried to do is I've tried to put everything I can on wheels. And the main reason for that is so that it's flexible so that I can move things around when I need to. When I'm trying to get a specific shot when maybe I'm trying to get a different talking head sort of setup, I can move things around and I don't have an issue. I don't have to sort of drag them or lift them up or anything like that. Everything on wheels makes life so much easier. I also have the mic. The mic stand isn't on wheels, but to be fair, it doesn't need to be because it's quite light, so it's easy to move. And yeah, just a simple pencil microphone you're gonna laugh, this microphone was like 60, 70 pounds, something like that. Really not an expensive microphone, but because I've done such a good job with the sound editing here, it sounds really nice and clear. You can do a lot with cheap gear as long as you have the rest of your space set up correctly. I have a makeshift sort of camera trolley that I've put together with parts and it works really, really well. So it's an Ikea trolley, I have a monitor on it, and then what I've done is I have a mini tripod with my camera on it and I've clamped the tripod to the trolley itself with some super clamps, I think they call them, or magic arms, whatever it is. And yeah, this is pretty cheap and affordable to do. I didn't want to sort of build or spend a ton of money doing it because I didn't need something that was like super rigid or super well put together. This does the job and I think it's actually put together quite well. The main thing is that everything is sort of encapsulated in this trolley. Everything is in this trolley that I need to do talking head videos like this. So the monitor, the camera, any lenses or anything that I need, any parts that I need, batteries or anything like that for this setup are all there. And then there's a power strip in the bottom. So the only wire I need to move is the power strip whenever I'm plugging it in elsewhere around the office. I like to call this the A-roll trolley because it is used for shooting A-roll, talking head like this. But I do also have a B-roll trolley. So it's very similar to this. It just doesn't have the camera attached to it. It has another monitor on it has some parts, has some lenses and stuff that I use for B-roll. And whenever I'm doing sort of like a top-down shot or something like that, I will have that next to me over here. I'll have that trolley here so that I can see the whatever I'm shooting top down when I have the camera above me. So yeah, it's really nice being able to, again, have that on wheels, move it around whenever I need to and just have another trolley with all the gear that I need. The light that I have with the grid. So yeah, this is the soft box. It's quite, I mean, I don't wanna say it's huge, but it's also not small. I'd say it's quite mid-size, but it does a good job. And that grid is what I love most about it, being able to direct the light on me when I'm recording videos. That is on a light stand from Newer on wheels, a very heavy duty light stand, mainly because that light can also be quite top heavy. My main key light is from Godox, it's the VL150, but I think what's actually important is not the light itself, it's the softbox that I have and the grid within the softbox. So with the look that I have, the grid itself helps focus the light, make sure that the light isn't spilling over too much so that the subject, which is me in the video, is nicely lit so that the focus is on me. It's almost sort of like a halo effect I like to, I like to see it as I like to call it. So that the rest of the scene is dark, but I'm lit up quite nicely. And then of course I had the accent lights and I have a hair light as well. So you can't see it because it's off frame, but I actually have a hair light up here hanging down. It's a tube light. And the, what it's doing is it's actually lighting my hair here. So if I turn it off, you'll see what I mean. If I turn the hair light off, you can see my hair isn't as lit up anymore. That's where the hair light comes in. And then the accent light comes in as well. The accent light lights up sort of around here and it lights up the edge of me. So if I turn the hair light and the accent light off, this is just the one light now on me. Makes it darker, makes it moodier, but that's not obviously the look I'm trying to go for. I do like having the accent light and the hair light. So if I turn the hair light on now, you can see that lights up my hair. And then if I turn on the accent light, accent light lights up all of this part around here. And that's just a look that I like. It's quite easy to replicate. It's really not complicated. I know a lot of people are trying to get the same sort of look. And yeah, it's just a three light setup. Anyone can do it. And the gear that I'm using, I like to think that it's relatively affordable. Obviously everything is relative, 
but I'm not using super expensive lighting. I'm not using super expensive or complicated gear. This is quite simple stuff. And yeah, this whole area is very, very flexible. We can move everything around if we need to, apart from the shelving unit, of course, but we can move everything around in this space for whenever we need to shoot any type of video, any type of photo, any type of new setup. It's also why that wall over there is quite plain right now so that we can have a plain backdrop and we can also maybe put like a curtain up, a black curtain, a green curtain, whatever curtain we want behind the desk setup itself and use that as a sort of shooting area. I have a trolley here from Ikea and yeah, this is also on wheels. You don't see this on camera, but this is basically the quick access area. So if I need to access a knife, a book, any accessories, remotes, lights, notebooks, or anything I need to talk about on camera, that will be on this trolley. Fake Ikea tree has some nice foliage, has some nice greenery. We also have a strip light, which I very, very recently added along the bottom. This is usually turned off when I'm recording videos. The reason I have this on right now is just to light up this area of the studio when the key light is off and when the light up here is off as well. Some artwork down here. These are basically Apple product badges that are attached to a sort of cardboard thing. It's quite heavy actually. And yeah, it's just nice having it in the background. And then I have another bit of artwork over here as well. On my right, I have a shelving unit, a Tilco shelving unit. And you can only see a portion of it, but this shelving unit is actually massive. It's really, really big. And I love it. I think it's great because it's black. It adds a nice contrast to the shot itself. All of this area is sort of like light and gray, a bit moody. And then you have this area here, which is completely dark with some gold accents. That's the main reason why I have it, just to add some nice contrast, add some golden accents to my setup. Of course, the other useful thing with this shelving unit is that it actually acts as storage. I can use it to hide photography gear or any other boxes or anything, anything I need quick access to, and I can use it to display things as well. And then we have the Godox of accent light here. And then we have the large Tilco shelving unit. I can barely get it on camera. I have to move back quite far for this. Currently not perfect. I do need to organize a few things on it. I do need to make it a bit more aesthetic looking. We also have this Ikea pegboard. These are so popular right now. I feel like everyone's getting them and I thought I had to get one as well. So <laughs> I wanted to be like everyone else. But yeah, just an Ikea pegboard. It has microphone, my microphone that I use for my finance videos. But it's nice to have because if I do need to put stuff on it, if I do need to add things to it, I can. And yeah, keep some stuff off the floor and quick access. That is the creative area. That is a sort of studio area, the studio space that I use for photo and video. For anyone interested, I also recently released a video creator course. It's aimed at those who are looking to up their video game, maybe get the sort of same high quality videos that I get, get the same sort of look and just everything that sort of goes into making videos. We already have a bunch of people in the club, so make sure to check it out. So that's it for this video, giving you a quick tour of my creative studio, where I make all my videos, where I shoot all my photos and stuff you see on YouTube, on Instagram, on Twitter. This is where it all happens. And of course I have my desk set up over there where I work pretty much every single day right now. So yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed it. Follow me on Instagram and Twitter and subscribe for more.